if I were to write a letter to my wife, uh, and in the letter I ended it with, uh, uh, love you puppy, okay? Someone who's on the outside, who doesn't know me, doesn't know the situation, doesn't know my story, doesn't know if I'm married or not, they'll see that and they might assume that, excuse me, either I'm writing a love, love letter to uh, a dog, like a pet, or um, that I maybe got split personalities, or that I'm just weird, whatever. Whereas, if you're my wife, there might be some, uh, some story uh, about how when we were dating, on our first date, something happened with a, with a dog or something, and so she got the nickname Puppy. Well, if you're not in on that, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know that. But what I'm saying is, a lot of times with the Bible, uh, it was written to a specific person or for a specific purpose, or something was going on that caused that to be written, and uh, instead of going trying to figure out what was going on, a lot of times we just read through the text and, and uh, immediately uh, want to name it and claim it, or want to get it to say something. The thing about the Bible is you can literally get it to say whatever you want, no matter how twisted you want. You can, you can shove it and twist it and make it into this little box where it doesn't make you feel bad about doing any kind of sin. You can make it say uh, that you're right for doing whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, for instance, uh, you could get the Bible to say that uh, only men can be saved and not women, or that uh, uh, women aren't welcome in church, or that you could get it to, you could get the Bible to say whatever you wanted it to say, as long as you twist it enough. Um, but what hermeneutics does is it keeps us from doing that. Um, I mentioned before, I said, first you have to figure out what it meant then and there. You know, who was it written to, why was it written, what was going on, uh, etc., etc., etc. Then you have to figure out what the difference is between then and now, uh, culturally, socially, uh, uh, government, whatever it be. And then you have to uh, discover the main principle of what's being said. And then you have to figure out an application to the modern day. You know, how is this still relevant? How is this... Why is it that God allowed this verse to carry out throughout the years if it has no purpose? You know, let's find the deeper meaning in this. Basically, um, I'm not saying find deeper meanings as in there's all kinds of hidden metaphors in the Bible. I'm not saying that. That's not totally not what I'm saying. Uh, there's only one meaning in a verse, but there's many applications. Okay, uh, I'll give you a little example. Jeremiah 29:11. 29, 29, Everybody quotes it. Uh, you know, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans, you know, for your well-being, for your future, for your success, all kinds of different stuff like that. And people always quote it, and not understanding where it was actually come from. It's from the book of Jeremiah, as I previously just said. Uh, he was writing to uh, the people of Israel who had been uh, taken captive to Babylon. This, this is what happened, okay? Jeremiah started prophesying to these people, Israelite, the Israelites in Judah, uh, that they needed to, turn, needed to turn from their sins. And then he was prophesying that they were going to get taken by Babylon. And then he started prophesying that they were, after, after Babylon had taken, taken them, God would remember the promise and that he would bring them back to Judah. Um, and the whole time these people are wondering, you know, we haven't even been attacked yet by this, by this, uh, by this people of, uh, of Babylon. You know, how, how is this even possible? And then after that, uh, the Babylonians came in. Uh, they killed their friends, you know, uh, the, killed, uh, raped the women, you know. Uh, they used to do this thing where they would shove a sword up the, uh, uh, the private area of a woman and then split her, uh, split her stomach open to where the baby... Uh, she was pregnant, would just fall on the ground, and uh, the, they would just gut men and open and just let the guts fall to the floor. Uh, they would do all kinds of mean, just careless stuff like that, completely hateful stuff. Uh, and they would, they, would, they would do stuff like that. Uh, and so after the people of Judah saw all this, you know, they were taken, everything that they knew as home was taken from them. 
you know, uh, uh, their their houses, their culture, their 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 neighbors, their neighborhoods, everything that makes us who we are as a people. They just took it from them. You know, and after all this, after God had warned them, then followed through with the warning, a after all that, then Jeremiah writes them a letter and says, you know, God knows what he has for you. How much more powerful is that when you actually understand what was going on? Well, how do we know that that's what went on? First of all, uh, uh, the book of Kings uh, details uh, the, the last part of Judah there, at the end of saying Kings, it details what happens there, what happens there. Um, and then uh, Ezra and Nehemiah records them coming back to Jerusalem. Uh, Jeremiah records some of it. Um, as I recall, I believe Josephus writes something about it. I'm not positive about that one, though. I, I haven't actually read that part of Josephus, so I'm not quite sure. Um, but you get the idea. Uh, you know, you always have to, f have to see what the Bible actually says. Um, there's two things that, words that I want you to be aware of. Exegesis and eisegesis. Exegesis uh, is where you read the Bible and you draw out from the Bible what's in the Bible. You are unbiased, you don't bring any presuppositions to the text, and uh, you don't have any, you don't show any prior knowledge of anything to do with the Bible. You know, uh, basically, you go to John 3:16 as if you've never heard it quoted a billion times. Okay, and what that does is it takes all your personal bias, all the personal things that you bring to the text, and it just lifts it up and throws it away. So that way, for while you're reading the text, this is the very first time you've ever read this. Okay, and then whenever you draw out a theological principle, you always match it with other points in the Bible that you've studied to make sure that you're drawing out in the text what is in the text rather than what you want the text to say. Um, I said Jesus, on the other hand, is where you get the Bible to say what you want. Earlier I was talking about how you can get the Bible to say literally anything. You can. That's called eisegesis. It's where you misquote, you use a verse out of context, uh, you don't understand what the, what the meaning of it was. Um, I know it looks like I'm picking my nose. I swear I'm just rubbing it. I'm just itching. Um, yeah, so there's a very real difference between what the Bible does say and what the Bible does not say. Um, Yeah, well, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about uh, exegesis um, and eisegesis. Hermeneutics, this is not, like I say, this is not meant to be a deep theological discussion. It's not meant to be the ultimate go-to guide. This is, uh, this video is made for Christian audiences, and it's made um, to give you an idea of why these things are important and give you a start on where to go to study them further. Uh, those two books that I, that I referred out to, uh, Grasping God's Word and Basics of Biblical Greek, uh, there's Basics of Biblical, Biblical Hebrew, I would advise reading these things, or at least breezing through them, to get an idea. Um, because it's very important. You know, I'm going to talk about this later in, very, in other videos, but one of the biggest threats to the modern day church is a lack of understanding. You know, why do you believe what you believe? And uh, many Christians nowadays can't answer that, and uh, that's why I've been put, why I'm posting these videos to kind of give you an idea, give you a place to go, kind of point you in the right direction for further study. Um, honestly, there's been, there's if you go on on YouTube, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of hermeneutics. Uh, but I just wanted to answer the question, why is hermeneutics uh, important? Um, and that's just to keep, to keep us from drawing a false assumption from the biblical text. That is why hermeneutics is important. Um, so I encourage you to, uh, to delve into your studies and uh, take your study time to a whole new depth. Uh, keep checking back on our channel. We'll be posting uh, more videos like this that uh, discuss important topics that are relevant to the Christian church today. Um, we have uh, ten videos up already about uh, our songs and, and walking them through this and uh, explaining where those came from, giving history and background on them. 
Uh, I encourage you to go look at those. It'll, it's on our channel. Uh, you'll notice them because it'll say WMM for World Movement Ministries and the number, whatever the video is, and then the name of the video. Um, and then also, uh, we're, I, I wrote a, uh, a book on leading worship. And we're turning those, that book, the different chapters of the book, into videos. Uh, and so tune into our channel for a video series on uh, lead, how to lead worship, uh, not just for the worship leader, but also for the uh, for the bandmates. And uh, you know, it discusses different thing, relevant things in uh, ministry, like burnout and stuff like that. Um, and uh, really, that's pretty much all I had to say. Thank you guys so much for the support for watching. Uh, God bless. And if there's anything that I forgot. Uh, I will uh, post another video uh, and ex go into whatever else I uh, I forgot. As you can see, I have this uh, this chart. Every time I get ready to make a video that I really want to make sure I don't forget anything, I write it on here. Uh, so I don't think I've forgotten anything. Um, the problem is that I recorded this and it got cut off at the end of the last video, so I had to be recorded. Uh, there's something I wanted to say, and I just can't remember what it was. But yeah, keep on, uh, keep on checking in, and we'll keep posting up videos. Um, I really can't remember what I was going to say. Alright, well, uh, thank you for watching, and uh, uh, tune in soon for another video. Thanks.